Good afternoon, everyone. I think it's afternoon everywhere now. Glad to have you join us for color theory in the PSAP. Uh, we're in for a treat here. Ruth Lagerquist is yep. our presenter. Um, a brief bio on Ruth is that she is uh, she is a dispatcher in Sheridan County, Montana. The 2021 Montana 911 EMS Dispatcher of the Year. Congratulations on that, Ruth. Thank you. Uh, recently, having been appointed as 911 Director for Sheridan County 911, Ruth is uh, a super person, a, a great character, and I look forward to uh, her presentation today. Uh, she's, I, I love the last paragraph of her bio. She says, my husband, Rick, and I have been happily married for over 45 years. We have two grown and married children, complete with a total of five teenage grandchildren. Art and hobbies are her stress relief, and she's tried just about everything, but still has blacksmithing on her to-do list. Yep. And she concludes by saying, ask me about working with anthrax and chemical nerve agents. So you're going to have to, at the end of the presentation, you're going to have to enlighten us on that, Ruth. Possibly. Yeah, I did it half blind, but that's okay. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, everybody give your attention to Ruth Lagerquist. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Um, after all this hard brain work with all the GIS and information, this is going to be a little bit, a little bit more artistic thought process, but that's okay. Um, we can use a little bit of a break. So, like you said, I'm Ruth Lagerquist, uh, newly minted director for Sheridan County 911 in Plentywood, Montana. Uh, we are. G, uh, okay, location information for GIS people. We are in severe Northeast Montana. Uh, we are touching Canada and touching North Dakota. So we're way up there in the middle of middle of nowhereville. Um, I am in my 34th year now at Sheridan County. I did take a couple years off for uh, good behavior, but I don't know, they might not say that. The, si the county is the size of Connecticut, but we've only got about 3,600 people. So we are a lone dispatcher in our, in our agency here. In our, so I, learn, I work alone. Um, I do my crafts alone, things like that. So I think about, I'm in my own head a lot. So I just decided I should do some sort of Oh, presentation because it scares me and I'm usually alone. So here you go. This is this is what you're gonna get. I did dispatch, I did graduate with the public dispatcher uh, class number one in 1989 at Montana Law Enforcement Academy. And I answered the very first 911 call in Sheridan County in 1998. I've always had an interest in art and psychology, and the psychology stuff does go with the 911, but not so much the art. So that's my extra fun stuff. So yes, you can smell the color nine. I know it sounds like an odd concept, which is perfectly fine with me because I like odd concepts. Um, talk a little bit about color, how it relates to stress and general suggestions to and ideas to help you surround yourself with the colors that you need and ideas on art and how to help with stress and how to help possibly um, come down from an anxiety attack or, or problem. If you have any questions, uh, please put it in the Q&A and I'll try to answer them later because I cannot present and chat at the same time. It just doesn't work. I'm of the uh, baby boomer generation, so that's where I be. A little bit, of, little bit of color theory here. Uh, I'm going to start with the ubiquitous color wheel. Uh, you know, your primary colors, which are the red, yellow, and blue. And then you start, you go with the secondary colors. Now, the secondary colors are the mixtures of the primary. So red and yellow make orange. Yellow and blue make green. 
uh, blue and red make uh, purple or they call it violet. You know, the technical color for is more of a, a good mixture between the red and blue. So they also have tertiary colors. Tertiary colors are the ones in between all the other colors. So you mix up a kind of a, a blue green with a green and come up with more of an aqua, things like that. Except for the primary colors, each one is a mixture of the color on either side of them. And um, Mark Chagall had, had said this very nicely, all the colors are the friends of their neighbors and the lovers of their opposites. Which brings me to complementary colors. Complementary colors are the colors opposite each other on the color wheel. So you have orange opposite blue, green opposite red, uh, yellow opposite violet. And I do know green and red together make gray and I think blue and yellow together make gray. So it's kind of blue and orange together make gray. So it's kind of interesting because I think when you mix them, they, they come into a, a non-color, I guess we would call it. There's the warm colors, which are pretty much red, yellow through orange and the cool colors, which are blue, violet and green. And on the edges of that, you can get a warm blue or a, a, a cool green, things like that, or cool yellow, cool orange. Uh, my husband, his favorite color is cobalt blue, and my favorite color is a salmon orange. And I've got to say, we have complimented ourselves, each other, pretty well for the last 45 years. We've been married quite a while. White would be uh, all the light and colors of the spectrum all together. So basically it's all colors. Where black, there's no light, there's no color. You don't have color without light. And that pretty much is no color at all. So it seems kind of opposite of what you'd think it would be. Can't talk about colors without rainbows. Rainbows, are always in the same or the, the same organization. And there's an acronym, Roy G. Bibb, to explain the colors of the rainbow. And they'll start out with red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. I think they just had to add that to make the uh, acronym work. I don't know. But these are the visual colors of the rainbow. Anything um, within red or to, to the side of red would be infrared, anything outside of violet or ultraviolet, and we can't see those. Those are not visual. Without AIDS, we cannot see those. So the ultraviolet would be the black light stuff that's go on farther than that. So when I'm talking about colors, you have to think, uh, what are your favorite colors? Or do you have a favorite crayon? And weirdly enough, I have a favorite color, which is orange, and a favorite rain or favorite crayon, which is blue green. And I like blue green because he can't decide: am I blue? Am I green? Am I blue? Am I green? So I, I kind of like that that unsurety because I think uh, a lot of people are unsure about a lot of things, and it makes me feel pretty good about him for a favorite crayon. So do you have a favorite color? Do you have a favorite crayon? Do you know what it is? Do you know how each color makes you feel? Think about it sometime, uh, just sit sometime. What, what do I think about red? What do I think about orange? What do I think about blue? How about different, different shades of blue? Think about each color individually and think about how you feel about each one. Do you feel, do you feel one makes you unsettled? Does, does one wake you up? Do you like that feeling? Do you want more calming colors? We also all see color differently. My uh, dad and I always disagreed on color descriptions. He had a van that was kind of an odd green and he always called it an odd greeny brown color. Well, to me, it looked like cow puckies. It looked like grass that had gone through the cow and come out the other end onto the grass. He thought it was a green. We, we always disagreed on colors that way. So talking about color deficiency and color blindness, more men than women um, ha are, are have color deficiencies and color blindnesses because that is tied to the X chromosome and men have XY, 
women have two X. The, X, the, the uh, gene on the X chromosome will override the Y chromosome. So men only need to have one X chromosome and it comes from their mother to give them a deficiency or blindness in color where women can have one X chromosome that has that deficiency and one that's regular and the regular one um, overtakes, overrides the uh, deficient one. For women to be colorblind, they have to have two X chromosomes that with this deficiency or blindness in it. So it's quite much less common for women. There's some different kinds of color deficiencies and color blindnesses. The uh, first would be a red green color deficiency. It's the most common type. And there are three, three portions of the red and green, three types of that. The most common type of red green color blindness is where the greens will have a more red shade. And the opposite type of that makes the red look more green and less bright. There's one also, the third, makes you unable to tell any difference between red and green. You don't know which one is red and which one is green. Now, I did paint a vignette one time on a wall for a friend of mine, and she said, my husband is colorblind, which is a color deficiency, and his would be under the red green. She said that he doesn't like green. He just couldn't say why. I don't like green, don't like green. But she said, I want, uh, I want a plant painted on the wall. And I thought, okay, well, what can we do with that? She said, well, the green that he dislikes the least would be a sage green. So she's got this nice sage green ivy hanging on the wall, well painted on the wall. It's not really hanging. Another type of color deficiency would be a blue yellow. It, it associates with the blues and yellows. There are two different kinds of those. One makes the blue and green hard to differentiate along with a red and yellow. So if they look at a blue and green, they can't tell which is blue, which is green. They look at a red and yellow, they can't tell which is red, which is yellow. Another, the second type makes it difficult to tell the difference between certain combinations of color. Uh, would be a blue and a green, purple and red, yellow and pink, um, and colors all around will look less bright. I'm, I really like color and I'm really affected by color. So that any of those deficiencies would be really hard for me to handle. Uh, you also have complete color blindness, which is much rarer than the other two types. Uh, in a deficiencies, the, the person perceives the colors differently, but can still tell that they are well colors. In complete color blindness, the rods and cones in the retina have some form of defect. There are different subtypes of this affected by different rods and cones taking on different shapes or not being present at all. And this, most, this leaves most people legally blind if they have an absolute complete color blindness and cannot tell color. A friend of mine has a color deficiency and he was joking one day, I just found out I was colorblind. It just came right out of the purple. So how about color tests? Do we, can we tell what we're like because we, we take a test online? Well, it's more for entertainment purposes, I think. But hey, go ahead. It's kind of fun. The, the internet tests are just, you know, I mean, anything you do on the internet is you have to take with a grain of salt, I got to say. Uh, the Lucher color test is a test where they uh, have you look at four different colors and put them in order of preference, and then another four colors and put them in order of preference. It was uh, invented by a Swiss psychotherapist, Max Lucher, in about 1947. This test is said to relate color preferences to personality. I've tried it. I, I don't know how well it does, but it's, it's still subjective. But every person's preferences are subjective and based on, a, on their world experiences or their memories. You see some guy in a green shirt that robbed you, you see that green again and you're gonna remember that trauma. The two sets of colors, they say will tell you all about yourselves, but 
yeah, it, it is it is kind of interesting. There's another thing with colors called the Stroop effect. This was uh, understood by John Ridley Stroop in the 1930s, and he sh it indicates our tendency to find it more difficult to name a color when it is used to spell out another color. So if you look at the bottom here, green is orange, blue is yellow, red is green. And you know how hard that is for me to tell you that. <laughs> but you could take internet tests on that to find out how quickly you can, you can understand that. And that just takes a different portion of your brain. Another interesting study, I found this very interesting, uh, was done by the University Hospital of South Manchester. They took red, green, brown, yellow, purple, pink, blue, and orange, and four shades of each of those colors, along with white, black, and four grays. So a total of 38 color options. They got uh, over 320 participants, and these participants, a third of them said they felt mentally healthy. A third felt anxious, and a third said they were depressed, and they were all volunteers. They were asked to choose three colors, the color they're most drawn to, the color most likely to catch the eye, and the color describing their day-to-day -day mood over the last few months. Well, they determined that saturation is very important and the shade is more important than the color itself because a light blue is not, not associated with a poor mood but a darker blue could be. The most popular blue, most popular color for healthy participants was blue 28, most popular blue, but blue 27 was top for those with anxiety and depression. So you see the difference just right next to each other on their little wheel. Yellow 14 was named most likely to catch the eye by all three groups. So that one was kind of a kind of a surprise to everyone. But in regards to the third color they chose, the mood the last few months, only 39% of healthy volunteers even associated their mood with colors at all. The most popular that they chose was 20% chose the yellow, a, a nice bright mood, but more than 50% and 30% of the anxious volunteers chose a gray as their mood the last few months, which we always kind of think gray is, is kind of cloudy and, and uh, not happy. So that, that's kind of understandable, but it was interesting the numbers that chose. The study co-author, he's a gastroenterologist, Dr. Peter Horwell, said that it's a way of measuring anxiety and depression which gets away from the use of language. And he found that he was, he was testing these on irritable bowel syndrome patients. And of course, they don't wanna talk much about their symptoms. So if he could choose colors, it would help him determine um, how, how much pain they were in, how awkward things were, how if they were depressed, if they were anxious about things, but because they're embarrassed to talk about them. But it, he found that it could also reveal pa patients' attitudes and possibly predict how well they would respond to treatments like hypnosis. You know, they're, if they're affected by color, they might, might be able to use the hypnosis, hypnosis. They're currently working on other applications also in the medical fields uh, with pediatrics and surgery. And kids can probably tell you a color before they can explain how they're feeling. So I think that one will be quite positive. Feelings are color. And we talk about, we talk about colors quite often with our feelings. Colors can de describe feelings because they can affect our feelings. You feel good when you know you look good uh, and you dress in colors you like, or you know sets off your eyes or sets off your gray hair. Um, I remember the color me beautiful in the 1990s. You would, they chose a season that your skin looked like and you dressed according to those colors. I just wear what I want, so it doesn't matter. And I have nothing that's no white at all and uh, very little black. 
Some of the other color anal analysis companies that with the uh, dressing in color is uh, the Color Me Pretty or Lori Lou. Some use seasons. Uh, some add more designations, uh, such as a cool autumn or a warm winter. Uh, they look at the veins on your wrist. They look at whether you have skin tones of gold or silver, things like that. But we talk quite, I mean, we use color a lot when we're talking about things that are emotional, uh, like in a black mood or in the pink and uh, purple. It's just purple. I tell you about a friend of mine, her husband, uh, would, every time the werewolves of London came on, and maybe you guys are too young for that, but they howl and, and talk about werewolves, and it's pretty cool. But there's a line in there that says his hair was perfect. So they were sitting in a car one time, and that came on the radio. They all started singing. And when he came to that one, he says his hair was purple. And they're like, What? So they had to Google it, look it up, show them it says per it's perfect, not purple. So in their family now, anytime anything is perfect, they say it's purple, just purple. So that, that's kind of cute. I get a kick out of them once in a while. Color and mood, mood and color. Uh, what kind of colors can be quite stressing? Well, colors can determine, help determine your mood. And some people are more affected by color. So remember that if you know that about yourself, remember that because if you're in a, in a room with a lot of red, if I'm in a room with a lot of red, it makes me angry. I get really tense and angry. I don't like that at all. And white makes me twitch. But uh, some of the stressing colors that they have found is red because it is a stimulating color. Um, increases heart rate, increases breathing, activates the pituitary gland. And a lot of restaurants uh, would use red in their decorations because it would make you hungry. They find it does cause poor performance on cognitive tests when volunteers are tested in a red room. And I totally get that one, I tell you. If you have a plain white room, something that's completely white, it can increase anxiety with too much white, with no variations of white. Um, I think quite often of everyone's fear of staining white pants or white shirts when you're having dinner. I just don't wear white for that reason. I had to dispatch out of our uh, auxiliary trailer that was our secondary PSAP and everything in there is white. And I couldn't, I, I, I sat there one 12 hour shift <sighs> And I came home and I was just, I, I, oh, I couldn't, couldn't deal. So the next night I brought a bunch of purple lights. And so I had the purple in there and it was so much better and so much easier. Another thing that can be stressing is uh, bright hues. So bright hues can bring excitement and ener energy to a room, but too many can be panic inducing and several bright colors in a small space can cause headaches. And I, I'm not a bit surprised about that. So mood and color. What are calming colors? We have greens and blues and pinks. Blue can be calming and relaxing, but some people equate the color blue with sadness. So it just depends again on the saturation uh, according to that, that uh, study, which I, I find quite interesting. Greens can be calming because they remind us of plants and growing things. The yellow undertones are the most calming because they and, and greens with have the ability to slow metabolism, which has an inherent calming effect. So greens are, are quite often used for calming. Soft pinks, unless pink is a color you really don't like, can be calming. My grandfather did not like pink at all, so it would not calm him a bit. And he always said pink stinks, so he didn't like that. Tones of white, varying tones of white, especially with added beiges, can be quite calming. And another way would be a monochromatic, uh, a monochromatic uh, de decor, where tones of the same color in a color scheme uses less mental energy to take it in. 
So if you're in a room with with uh, multiple tones, you don't have to try to pick out colors and it doesn't it it makes you much more calm. Ma, uh, Minnesota State University did a study and they determined red is the most stressful color. I agree. And green, maybe with a little white added and again with a little yellow undertones can be the most calming color. So what are your colors? Uh, you have to determine what you want to feel. In my house, I like lots of color. I want stimulation. Um, my dining room is orange, varying shades of orange all painted on there. In the bedrooms, I have more calming colors. I have a monotone bedroom. I have one in pale grays. My daughter's house, however, when I go to visit there, she wants everything super calming. So she has light gray, light blue, white trim. I get there and I'm there for a couple days and I start drooling, but I drool out of both sides of my mouth. So I know I'm level-headed. What we have rental properties and I don't paint the walls white. Can't, can't stand white. White is hard to paint with, frankly. Uh, so I use uh, warm neutrals because up here in Montana, the, the winters get very cold. And I found that warmer tones do help the rooms feel warmer. And I think actually you use less heat. They have different blues. Um, in the South, there's one called a hate blue. They paint on the porch ceilings down in the South and it's supposed to keep ghosts away. My aunt uh, in Florida says it is, a, a, it is a blue with a little touch of green on it. That's what she's come up with. But frankly, I think anything that's a light blue, they consider a haint blue. Uh, my sister had a problem at her house with wasps. They would put their nests in the uh, eaves, the overhangs. And I read somewhere, paint it a sky blue and they won't be, they'll, they won't think anything's there and they won't be making their, their nests. And I did do that for her. And I got to say, it has worked. So I, I'm totally not, I'm totally with that one. In Switzerland, they tested something called a drunk tank pink, which is a light pink, thinking that it would calm violent prisoners. Um, they found that it worked for the short term, 20, 30 minutes, it would calm them down a little bit. But over the longer amount of time, it stressed them out. It had the adverse effect. That was not so great. So what color do you choose? How do you want the room to feel? That's what I ask people when they ask me uh, to help them choose colors. Uh, I have a lot of people come to me and asking, what should I choose? What should I do this? What should I do here? And I'll say, how do you want it to feel? Do you want it to feel bright and happy? Do you want it to feel this? Uh, I had a friend come and ask me what color she should paint her bathroom. I said, well, do you want it bright? Do you want it happy? Do you want more of a butter color? Do you want more of a bright yellow? And I chose a color. I said, here, check this one out. Check the colors around and see what you think. Perfect. She said, it's the absolute. She painted it four times before she came to me. And she says, you picked the absolute best color without even being in the bathroom. So fill your environment with colors that you like and, and how you want them to make you feel. And, and knowing how the colors make you feel, you have to think about that first. Uh, your bedroom can be a sanctuary by using colors that make you feel calm and help you get to sleep. If you can't paint the walls, if you're renting or you just don't want to paint them, use uh, accessories, bedspreads, towels, rugs, art. Don't follow the herd with what colors are popular that, that year, that month. Use what you need to do. My living room, and I've painted it two or three times since, has been a pale apricot since the early 1980s, and I am still not thinking I want to change color. How about art? Uh, we have surrounded ourselves with the colors we want and the colors that we need. And uh, since we're talking about color and I show these little crayons, how about an adult coloring books? Well, did you like to color as a kid? If you didn't, it's not going to help you calm at all. Uh, but coloring can relax the brain. I, it, it has low stakes. And in our job, 
as 911 uh, emergency communicators, everything we do can have high stakes. So this here, you color outside the line, who cares? Nobody cares. So the stakes are significantly lower. If you wanna be an artist and you don't know what else to do, here we go. You can color inside the lines or color outside the lines or color any color you want, make your own artwork. Shoot, hang it on the wall, go for it. They found that coloring mandalas and a complex designs, which we've seen a lot of recently in the adult coloring books, but they have found through studies that it does reduce anxiety and has reduced anxiety in uh, undergrad students, which I think is quite interesting. Coloring has also been used in nursing homes for calming dementia or Alzheimer's patients. And that, that says a lot too, because they can't consciously say, I want this color, but it does help calm. How about other art therapy? To me, color and art go hand in hand, whether the medium is crayon, pencil, paint, or a mixture of everything. Art can be made alone. It can be made with others. Uh, think about those paint and sip paint, uh, classes where they sip their wine and they paint a picture. Uh, I understand. I've never been to one. I understand, though, that the painting gets a little bit looser after a little bit more wine. As long as the art is mindful, you're thinking about the art. It helps you get away from what you're what you're concerned about. It can be any medium again. Uh, mindful art therapy has shown to help cancer patients with their symptoms of physical and emotional distress during treatments. Uh, we learned, uh, I went to a class where we did collages with uh, magazines and we were to use those with children who had been through trauma, foster children that had seen awful things and that would help them relax from the, help them think about something besides the trauma and the anxiety that goes along with that. And I got to say that I, watching the kids do that, it was wonderful. Finding something, colors, art, whatever you want to do, everybody is different. They all stress differently. We all think differently. Um, we have different styles of living, different styles of coping, different styles of communicating, different styles of celebrating. And, uh, we can't judge other people. We can't judge other people because they have different ways. Uh, we could learn a lot from crayons. Some are sharp and some are pretty, some are dull, while others are bright. Some have weird names, but they all have learned to live together in the same box. And we're all on this same earth. Feelings come from many different places for many different people. So we have to remember that we are different. In regards to colors and feelings, you are the only one that knows how colors will affect you and what you need to, to feel the way you wanna feel. So again, take some time to think and to feel and decide what colors may work for you. I was never so happy as when our office was painted a color that white was just too, too much. And it's not much of a color. It's just a really light tan, but it is so wonderful. I have been in dispatch centers, um, one in particular that painted their tiny, tiny little dispatch room a dark blue. And frankly, I have no idea how they can work in there. I couldn't do it because I do know I re react significantly to the colors in my surroundings and in my sight. So think, how much are you affected? Okay, so color is our is associated with our sense of sight. There are other ways that you can help uh, help with your stress and help with your grief and help with anxiety or anger or panic. So I have a real simple exercise here that's very easy to remember. Uh, you can change it according to how you like to do it. There's lots of different ways but it uses your, your all, you can use all your senses or you can use one sense, it really doesn't matter. So it can help quickly calm you down. It can, it can help with a, pangs, a panic or an anxiety attack. 
Um, I have seen it work amazingly with children, especially young ones. So let's start. We're gonna count, we're gonna start with a countdown. Start with number five. Count five things you can see. I see something on the wall. I see something out the window. I see this, I see that. Uh, you can choose five things of the same color because we see so much. You can, I'm gonna find five things that are red. So intentionally look, I see a red horse. I see a red sign. I see a red uh, picture on the wall. Um, you can count the, the clouds. I see a cloud that looks like Mickey Mouse. I see a cloud that looks like a pig. You can do that, but count five. Count on your fingers if that will help. One, two, three, four, five. We start with our countdown with five. The next is four. Find, find four things you can touch. And again, mindfully count. Four things I can touch. I can touch a paper. I can touch a pen. I can touch the desk. I can touch the chair. Um, how does it feel? Think about how it feels. Is it scratchy? Is it cool? Is it warm? Um, create, uh, count out four pens on, on your desk. If you can't move much or can't do much at that particular time, lay four pens out and just count those four pens. Three, find three things you can hear. I can hear uh, the dog barking outside. I can hear the refrigerator running in the kitchen. Um, I can hear, if you're outside, I can hear a babbling brook. I can hear a cat. You have white noise. Count the noises. Again, use your fingers to count. Two, two things you could smell. This might be a little awkward when people are around you, but give it a go. Lean a little bit toward the, the paper that you just copied. I can smell copy paper a mile away. Uh, lean a little bit toward the candle you have at your desk. Lean a little bit toward that. Two things that you can smell. Smell is the sense that is most associated with memories. Think about um, how you can, how your grandma's kitchen smelled while she was baking bread, how the ocean smelled, how, uh, someone's perfume. You can even think about things you've smelled before, but count one, two, think, that, think them through. And final is number one, something you can taste. Like I said, don't lick the wall or don't lick the window when you're in a big office, but you can lick your lips. A little bit salty, maybe a little bit of lunch left over there. Uh, or think about how cocoa tastes. Think about the soup you had last night tastes. Think about the textures. Um, you have a cup of coffee, take a sip of coffee. That's the final thing. By counting mindfully, it helps your mind and body become calmer. Just, and, and, and mindfully counting with your fingers, mindfully counting with tick marks, if you can, if, if you seems odd that you'd be using your fingers, but make it fit for you. Decide where you're at, what you can do, uh, but make sure to count on from at least five on down. You don't have to use all your five senses. You can just use your sight and fi count five things that are square, four things that are round, three things that are green, two things that are black, and one thing that's white. But mindfully look at it, see the texture, see the what's going on there. So counting down, five, four, three, two, one, very simple way to help with anxiety or panic. All right, I know, I know this is color theory in the Peace app. We've talked about um, color blindness and that can associate with our callers. If a caller can't tell you what color something is, don't push them. They know if they're, they have a color deficiency, give that a try. Color is one of the first things we ask about on, on vehicles and um, color of hair, what color skin, what color clothing are they wearing? So think about that, that, that our callers could maybe not see colors like we see. They will, they will know if they have deficiencies or if they're colorblind and they should be telling you that too. So we've talked about that. We've talked about uh, colors that can help you uh, feel calmer, feel, feel more uh, rejuvenated, more 
active, things like that, what you want to be, what you want to do. Uh, we've talked about a mindful art therapy, and we've talked about trying to count down mindfully into a more uh, calmer state from wherever we're at. But with stress, if you, if you are quite stressful, you also need to be mindful. When stress gets to be too much, we need to stop and reflect. Reflect on why I'm stressful, what I'm stressful about, what caused my stress, and acknowledge that stress. Think about what you need to help with that stress, help come back from it. Do you need a group therapy? Do you need one-on-one -on -one therapy? Do you need peer support? Do you need to just talk to somebody and vent? Do you need to just take time and space to process? Take that time and, and, and make that space to help yourself deal with it. My dad had a major life event, and I would say it's a nearly death event, and I was with him for 10 days in the hospital, came home on July 4th after a 400 mile drive. And I was just a mess. I was just a wreck. I was just on the edge. And my whole family, you know, remember I have adult children, met me at the door. We're going to go watch fireworks. Let's go. Hurry, hurry, hurry. I said, I'm not going. And they all stopped in their tracks. And they said, what? But we got to go over. We're going to go with Kelly and John. And we're going to, I said, no, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm going to spend the evening in the basement with the dog. They thought I was really weird, but nobody seemed to understand that I needed that time and space. But I took it because I felt I would be more important and more useful to my family if I did what I needed to do. So think about what are your limits? Are you past those limits? Recognize when you need more help than you can do on your own. Learn to acknowledge and ease stress in situations. The more you do that, the better you become at handling stress. Change things if change is possible. Can you change it? If not, you need to learn how you can live with it. Come up with ideas for that. The more you learn and know about your own stressors, your own stress, the better you can alleviate stresses or manage stressful situations. And we're quite stressful in the emergency communications um, centers. It's, it gets very stressful, even just sitting there waiting for a phone call. Remember, you live most of your life inside your own head. So make it a good place to be. So leaders and supervisors, I'm talking to some of you guys. Uh, we need to be ready when someone does need help with SISM, peer support, um, listen to them or just let them vent. Sometimes that's all people need. It's just to just to vent a bit. They're not making a complaint. They just need to let off a little steam. Know your agency or agency and insurance psycho psychology service policies. Know what you can offer. Know what you can suggest if, if you feel someone is past their limits. Be attentive and watch your people. If someone seems a little stressed out, just go over and say, hey, are you okay? You need a break? You want to talk about it? Uh, there are no simple answers. Sometimes it does take imagination in low or high places to make sure your people are okay. This is not just after critical incidences because the damage may be cumulative and slow, slow to come to a head. And it might just be a pile of regular old calls and just a regular old call sets them off. Sometimes that happens, but keep an eye out. So where do you go to get people some help? Um, I heard a few years ago in North Dakota, I heard uh, Sean Riley and his wife, who is a nurse, he's a, he's a retired uh, police officer and his wife is a nurse and they started a free referral service called Safe Call Now. And the website is up there. It's a 24 seven crisis service um, free crisis service. You can call, they will try to get you help. Um, he was founded after Sean had to quit his 20 year career in law enforcement because he could no longer hide the secret that he was addicted to alcohol and drugs. So 
he he's been there and it is peer support it is people that do our job people that work with us people that that we send out to the crisis i uh, gotta say they're very interesting people they will help find you someone it might be a video call uh they did they said that they did find one most recently before that for someone that the an officer that said i can't do anything local they'll know who i am i can't do it so they found him a video conference this was way before uh before covid19 made it popular for video stuff uh but they'll help find the resources that you might need nina has a wellness center they uh a lot of good information on then at apco prochart has a toolbox for health and wellness and Dr. Reverend Edie de Vilbis, and I don't know if you've heard of her, but she is the self-proclaimed chaplain on 9 Wonder Women, which is a uh, Facebook webpage, I believe, and they do a lot of good things within our public safety, uh, emergency communications dispatch area. So we could do better and we must do better. There are far worse things to drop on people than crayons. Um, all the all the uh, all the quotes here are from Robert Fulgham's book, Everything I Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. And I got to say, we learned to deal with ourselves a little bit in kindergarten. Remember, little the little toddlers are just wild and having tantrums. By kindergarten, we can help ourselves. By kindergarten, we learn to look at other people and think about other people. It's really quite interesting. So this is my quote. And again, Robert Fulgham, Fulgham, I like to live a balanced life. I learn some and think some and draw some and paint some and sing and dance and play and work every day some. Now, a lot of people don't like my singing and dancing, but I don't care. But I do some sort of art every day. Every day I learn something every day. Uh, I think a lot every day. And you've got to have a little play in your life, but you still have to work to pay those bills. I did have a YouTube ready to go, but apparently I didn't pit, didn't push the right button at the beginning. And I had a little bit of a problem getting into uh, here so that you can hear me and see me, which you may or may not like, might not be enjoying, who knows. But Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell sing a, a funny little, I think it's a TikTok video. It's on YouTube and it's it's pretty entertaining. And they song, sing about colors and basically say, I can be anything you like. Thank so you. Jeff, does this mean that it's time for me to go? <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot for sharing your insights. Okay. If you want to try to read, share your screen and just check that audio box you could certainly play the youtube okay okay that's, well that's here's my email and uh we do have we do have a, a few minutes here before our time is 100 percent up okay we don't have any q and a's but uh somebody noted in uh etowah county alabama they have a blue and green and i'm assuming that was for the colors in their PSAP, so some ah. they're paying attention. Yeah, to, yeah. Our our PSAP is is um, a nice tan with a little bit of brown. But somebody decided to paint the bathroom a really dark aqua with kind of an odd purple. So <laughs> I don't spend much time in the bathroom, so that's okay. Uh, I do have some pictures of uh, painting in my house if you're interested in that. Oh sure, let's see. And, and I don't have to. I don't have to try to unshare the screen and share it again for the YouTube. But they could just. Uh, they could just uh, Google on YouTube for Will Ferrell and uh, Ryan Reynolds, and it will pop up because there's. Will Ferrell there. dancing uh, promises to be some uh, relief from stress, right? There you go. I hope so. Okay, here's some pictures. Let me see. It. Oh, do I? Am I still sharing? Still sharing, yep. If you okay. want to share pictures, we do there have we go. Q and A's once we get through this. Oh yeah, you showed me this the other day. Yeah, yeah. I really uh, love the family tree there. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, my husband and I are there in the trunk area, and the roots are like four or five generations. And I'm trying to get 
because one of my hobbies is genealogy. I'm trying to get photographer photos of my ancestors. And once I get photos, I'm looking for signatures. So I've been able to find a few of those. Right. Um, I have a bathroom with Alice in Wonderland and my husband's favorite quotation on the wall above my side of the bed. <laughs> so, and uh, there's a little bit more. I painted a snicker bar in the basement floor. <laughs> wow. And uh, I painted my husband. He wanted an Australian pub in the basement. So, nice. yeah, so we did that. But did you want me to try to unshare and reshare again for that video? Do we still have time or? Um, yeah, sure. Let's give okay. it a try. So how but do I do that? In the meanwhile, I'll, uh, I'll read these Q and A's and concentrate on that. And I'll, I'll bring these up. And if we need to okay. do that. Well, here's a place for sharing sound. Is that what I want? Yep. That's if you want to just check that box. Okay. And I need to. There we go. There you go. There's my reminder. Look at that. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Yep. Oh. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Oh, you know why? Oh, but you've got it muted. I see that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I could be brown, I there could be go. blue, I could be violet sky, I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky. I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky. I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky. I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky. I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky, I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. So there you go. Anything you like. Anything you like. All the breads. A uh, question came in oh, here with only 3,006 residents. Oh, this? Oh, oh no. Oh, no, no, no. It's soft. Oh, that's so your this, YouTube video. If I wasn't stopped. Uh oh, I'm still on. Time. I'm not kidding. Oh my God. Can you move in with me? So today you show them that dipping sourdough into olive oil. Okay, I'm closing that out. <laughs> okay, I think that's probably a smart idea. Shows, shows how often Never know I if do YouTube this what's thing. Pop up, right? Yeah. Um, somebody asked, with only 3,006 residents, are you the only dispatcher and how many calls do you get in a day? Okay, we have 3,600 residents. Uh, the county seat has little bit less than 18 or about 1800 yes we are the only only one dispatch dispatcher on at a time we have four full times um we work 12 hour shifts and yes we're the only one in the courthouse forever and ever all night long except for the ghosts <laughs> right some of those uh 18 ghosts from the 1800s uh, yeah, actually, you know, I think some of them are from people that have died in the jail, too. Oh, wow. It's That's quite interesting, but nobody really bugs me, I guess. But yeah, we'll have one dispatcher on at a time. One more question here, and then I think it'll be a time to wrap it up for everyone. Oh. <laughs> um, the counting exercise did not help my anxiety because I couldn't decide which things to choose. Any other quick ideas for reducing oh. stress? She says you are... Hilarious, by the way, and thanks for your stress relief break. Well, I know I was getting stressed out with GIS stuff because it was filling me up. And then all of a sudden it was falling out the ears. So I can't say that I was able to uh, understand a lot of that because a lot of that was past my pay grade, I guess. I don't know. But I do need to start understanding GIS a little better. Um, quick ideas for reducing stress. I go for I go for sight and color myself. Um, Play some 70s music. That's the best music in the world. That, that's got to help with stress. Uh, Michelle, try a fidget spinner. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> or a pen, tapping a pen, you know, clicking the thing. I, there's a lot of different things. Um, at work, when something gets really, really wild to help with stress, my leg starts jiggling. I don't tell it to. It just does it, it on its own. It does it. Nice. Yep. 
Well, Ruth, I really appreciate your presentation today. And, uh, and as uh, Michelle said, uh, you, you're a character oh. in the best sort of way. And I really appreciate you sharing some time with us and your effort. Thank here. you. And um, you have a great rest of the day. Uh, Stephanie, do we have the link to the next or is this the last? Oh, I will grab that link for us right now. One second. Yes, the, uh, I think I closed it here. My event squid agenda. The final session is overcoming the common operating picture challenge um, with ComTech. And here we have the link. Excellent. All right, so overcoming the common operating picture challenge, 180 degrees diff different from color theory in the PSAT showing the uh, the diversity of topics here. <laughs> that's Again, right. We got to have some diversity. We're not all the same. So yep, that's right. Really appreciate your time right. today. Thanks for being part of Data Mark Orbit and everybody go enjoy that that uh, common up earning picture presentation. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Bye bye.